Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, it's March and the madness begins. It's a gray, gloomy Saturday afternoon, the first weekend of March, and we're gonna get some rain today. We've had some freezing rain, maybe freezing drizzle, maybe a few snowflakes in the overnight, but the temps hovered around the freezing mark, and it's 34, 35 degrees right now, and we're heading for a 40, 42 degree high for today, and there's more rain coming. Before we show you around the yard, let's go uh, back to the plant room this morning after I jumped on the treadmill and watched an episode of The Bonsai Zone, I had to water some of my plants with my morning ritual on a Saturday morning. It was super nice to have Nigel Saunders back with a video, Ficus Friday in this case, for me to watch when I was on my treadmill. The first thing I'm gonna check out typically is the bonsai pot tank. So I took a peek at that, looked at the fish to see what was going on in there, looking at the water levels. The water level does go down fairly rapidly with the bubbler and just the evaporation with all that big uh, grow light heat on there. I do have to bring up the water level uh, quite occasionally actually. My Saturday is usually reserved for adding a little miracle grow into my water so I have a little fertilization. And from last weekend, I was able to gather some rainwater. So I used some rainwater in my sprayer, add some miracle grow, and I'm good to go. I kick things off with the porch lacarias and some of the ficus trees that are in the greenhouse area back in the closet. Make sure those are all good and watered. Now this is kind of a spray water, not a huge dousing water because I did that a couple of days ago. So they just needed a light retouching of water. And of course this was gonna add a little bit of fertilization to the plants. I have a lot of cuttings on top of the original fish tank and bonsai pot contraption I made, the big one. I have all these cuttings that are doing really, really well. There's some really big rapid growth in the last uh, two to three weeks or so, so things are bushing out. On a future episode, we'll take a peek at some of those and kind of do an update on that section. I moved to the big bonsai bench that's in front of the north-facing window. And I have a lot of premnas there, my premnas. I have a couple of ficus, uh, melon seed ficus. I also have the finicky Fukian tea that's leafing out pretty good, looking real healthy. And then I have that grape wood that I put that uh, glaze layer on. And we have four trees because the one did die. So I'm putting some uh, fertilization into these pots with the sprayer today, just getting everything all nice and uh, watered down. Not a huge saturation, but enough to get some fertilization uh, just uh, tickling the tips of those roots and hopefully to see more growth in the next couple of weeks. Back outside, the birds are chirping a little bit and the drip drops of water are all over the place. We've got the deck posts, we've got some of the bonsai benches, the tree limbs. All the freezing rain and or rain and sleet that was on these surfaces are slowly, just slowly starting to melt as we uh, inch up towards 40, 42 degrees today. So let's take a peek at how things look right now in this really gray day as there's a little bit of frost slash freezing rain on the tips of these trees and structures around the yard. Yeah, I have a problem there. So the last episode I did was the chop of the hemlock. So there's the hemlock. Yep, we got a little bit of ice on here. Now be careful with all these trees with this ice on here that we don't get any breakage. But uh, my biggest concern before I work on any tree today is I left one of my buckets on the rain barrel that's upside down and not working because there's a leak in it. But I left this here. I had captured about three or four buckets of water last time I did a show, and I left that there. That's not good. So all the water is gonna clog up there where all the drips are coming down, and it's gonna start going over the edge like I think it's already started. So if it rains later today with any amount of you know heavy rain, it's gonna back up and there's gonna be water up there, then it's gonna get cold, it's gonna freeze. 
and those will be in trouble and we'll have cracks and, and, and breakage and ice dams. It'll be horrible. So I need some warm water. We're gonna have to melt some ice to get this thing, yeah, fixed up. So we get to do that before we touch any bonsai today. My hope for today is to take a, a little peek at these two trees. So I have a mugo pine here that I picked up uh, last year, discount section, that was out in the uh, garden area. And one of the tricky things about the garden area is you have to make sure as soon as you can kind of wiggle them loose that you might put them on a little bit higher ground. I moved them up here to the benches. They'll be fairly protected here. And um, we can start to uh, maybe do a little cleanup that I didn't get to last fall or in the winter months here. And so I would like to repot this later. A um, mugo pine, I have learned, not one of the better trees to repot in the spring with most trees having success in the spring. The, the mugo pines, not as much. Um, one of the varieties that uh, a fall prune or a late uh, summer prune actually, uh, a summer prune is gonna be better for this mugo. So I just wanna cut a couple branches off uh, here now uh, before the sap really starts to flow. I wanna get some of this uh, cut up just a little bit so I don't have any super thick bulges with this growing season that's about to happen here because um, there's a lot of areas on this, uh, on this uh, mugo that right like right here we have one two three four five and there's a couple back here six seven eight nine branches growing from here so either this whole thing has to come off at some point or we can try to maybe um get some some branches so we can thin this out a little bit the trick with this is i'm not going to repot it i might be able to scrape away the top layer of the soil just a little bit to see if i can see where the nabari is and i should do that because i will not know where the front of this tree is at all and so if I just go in and take branches off, I might take off branches I don't want to. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now this is a version of a Scots pine and I have to double check which version this is. Um, it's a little bit longer a needled version. Um, and this had a really nice thick uh, uh, trunk when I saw it in the nursery clearance. Uh, super good deal. This also has a bit of a bulge right here. So it's a really, it's kind of the unfortunate part of this tree, but the bottom was so nice um, and thick that I thought I would take this one for the price and see what we can do with it. So I also might do just a little bit of cleaning on this tree before the growth pushes out too, so we don't have any more of these bulgy areas for the future. Now what we're gonna do with this to clean it up, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's how it's fixable or if we turn the tree just the right angle, sometimes you can hide some of the reverse taper in a bulge area like this. So again, I will probably cut the, um, I will cut the pot around here down to the soil level tease away a little bit of soil just to see if I can get a glimpse of how this might look, uh, which front might be the, the one, number one choice, number two choice, so I don't take away any branches. And then the third tree for today is um, one of my larches. So the tamarack here, this is my formal upright tamarack. And I did do some uh, pre-winter pruning to kind of make sure that this was all down to size. But now that we're getting ready for the spring push in a couple of weeks, I want to make sure that I have these branches set where I want them to grow. I have a couple of oddball ones like this one right here. This one grows back into the tree. I don't want that one at all, so we'll cut that one off. So I'm just going to do just a little, little pruning on, on the larch here uh, before it gets the big push this spring. So we're going to try to tackle these three trees today. Just very light, subtle work just to kind of set the, set the um, uh, tree in motion for a really nice uh, growing season where we won't get a lot of bulging a lot of weird things going on um, We'll repot this one in the fall I do hope to repot this one this spring and this one We're just gonna let push out this year, but before we do that I showed you moments ago that I've got some uh, Household chores first. I got to get rid of that bucket of ice or we're gonna have some backup. That'll just be ugly Okay, I've got my two buckets of water here. 
there's a lot more dripping going on so it's getting warmer we got to get this ice melted so i've got some just tap water hot tap water i'm going to see if we can get this melted as I continue to put more warm water down the bucket here, the ice is starting to melt away and there's a nice little ring around the uh, gutter here that's getting more and more open. I still can't move it at all, so we have to have the warm water here to keep melting this ice slowly but surely. I do have a pot of water in the house that's going to start boiling soon that if this water isn't warm enough and doing it uh, quick enough for me or doing it successfully enough, I can go to the boiling water and we'll maybe get a little bit faster movement. But this is one big solid chunk of ice, so we're not having movement anytime soon. I do know that there's some uh, melted ice and an air passage from the top of the ice here down underneath to the opening here. And I know that because the leakage of water all of a sudden started to bubble and continue to pour out really, really fast when I was stopping pouring some of the water in. So when the camera was off, and all this explosion of water, and so all the water was being released from the gutter, which is a good sign because I made an air gap so the water could force its way out from the pressure, from uh, the weight of the water. So let's keep going. After being in the house for just a few minutes, coming back out to check the water, yeah, it's cold. <laughs> What I expected. That's still a little bit warm. So the problem is now I have a deep enough water in here where I'm just putting warm water in a pile of cold water. I don't know how warm it stays as it hits the ice. So I need a smaller baler to get the water out. Because now my hands are like I'm on an ice fishing trip and I'm digging down trying to clear the hole out from all the slush so I can catch a walleye through the ice. Yeah, that's not exactly warm. This bucket definitely was in tough shape if I'm able to rip a plastic bucket this easily. It's allowing more water to seep out of here so I don't have to drain so much of it the hard way. Okay, so in goes the water from the stove. It's a little hotter. And yeah, we're just gonna let that sit for a while. There we go. There we go. There we go. And there it comes. All right. So there we have our ice formed in the shape of the gutter. I probably had, you know, that bottom foot plus trapped with water. So now this is gonna continue to flush so I can put a bucket down below and ca capture more rain today, but I gotta not forget about it this time and take it out. We're back inside and I've got the three trees that I wanna see if I can work on today. I've got the uh, Scots pine, I've got the mugo pine, and I've got the uh, larch here. We're gonna start with the larch. I think that's gonna be the easiest one to work on today. So let me give you a once around with the larch. This is uh, probably the straightest trunk tree I have. It's my most formal upright. And we'll give it a spin. So you come around seeing the right hand side of the tree now. And what I like about the larch, if you see from the side here, there is depth, a lot of growth back here, but it's a little weak out front. And there's the view from the back. Pretty nice view too. And then uh, left side. And then back to the front. So again, I'm just going to get rid of some of those branches that are crossing really weird. I didn't quite go short enough in the fall as I, as I probably should have. So we're just going to trim this up and get it ready for the spring. There's a big gap in uh, branches right here. We don't have much going right here. So, you know, one day I might consider putting an approach graft here here. Um, but I'm just going to wait to see what this tree does, where buds come, and where they grow over the course of the years. I just like this formal upright, and as it grows and matures, I'm just going to keep letting it grow, cutting it back, and just kind of seeing where it goes. So one of the first things that's sticking out to me as I'm standing off to the left here and taking a peek is this one really is big and bold and comes out at my face. And then these kind of crisscross under here. This looks like there's possibly some dieback right here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it right there because I have four viable buds right there. This one I can shorten up right here as well, and this one I might as well just shorten up. So we'll see what these do. Now this one's super big. 
I've got some uh, bigger buds in the back there. Um, we just don't need it that big. And this one we can cut back as well. So this is one of the stronger primary branches on the left side. There's one here that tucks a little bit lower. And this one should be longer, so I'm just gonna leave that go. But this has a weird wraparound branch, so I'm gonna cut this off there and hope things keep growing out that way. This could be wired someday or moved somehow, some way. You see all the growth is on that backside, nothing on the front. So hopefully this year, all this uh, new growth and new sunshine coming in will maybe let um, some of the buds form over here more. I will cut off this one because it's on the inside. You see how it's almost a 90 degree angle right here and this is growing on the inside. Let's get rid of that. We don't need that. Opens that up right there. We have two branches growing from right there. This is the weaker of the two. We're gonna cut that one off. So we have now branches that are just fine there and we'll see how they ramify and get going. Okay, so that's that back branch and this one's fine too. This has a little bit of, a little bit of foliage still left on this tip right here. We'll see what that one does. This is the next primary branch then at the bottom. Oh, there is the, incidentally this little one back here. And again, for texture on the tree, um, it would be nice if this one was growing this way to fill up over here, but it's not. It could always be swung around later on, uh, maybe this year, because it's a small enough branch. And with this uh, one growing right here, maybe a little dieback right there. Um, if this could be leaned over this way, maybe it can be uh, put over here in the future. So that could be a really uh, good reason to wire something like right there, because we don't see that branch where it comes from, but it could, find, could provide some good depth for the tree. So I will consider that uh, later on this year. I don't want to do that right now. And then this branch right here. So this would be nice if it came down a little bit lower, but again, we're letting this grow naturally. It's a little bit of a T branch. Really like how this one flows off the trunk. So I would get rid of this one if I needed to, because then I'd have boom, boom, and then this guy back here. I'm gonna leave it for one more year because I'm not bulging there or anything. I don't see anything I don't like at the moment. So then we have this guy here is pretty thick coming at us. I'm gonna cut down there so we have a thinner, we have two buds. There's one right there by the tip of my, uh, my scissors there. And then we have this one kind of growing up. We'll cut that one off and there we go. So I leave, I leave that one where it is. I can clean up this little dead pruning mark. And we have two buds back here and here, here and here that might do something this year as well. Camera still wants to fog up a little bit. I'll keep checking it so we're not getting too blurry here for you. But we went ahead and we just cleaned those up a little bit. I cleaned this one right here. This one's coming right at us, so let's get rid of it. We got two buds here and here. We'll let those grow. There's a couple buds right here and here. So we have a real thick part right here. It was cut right here to let this ramify here, but I'm just gonna cut that off right there because we have the split to two right there. And there's even a bud right there where my, where my scissors was. So we got these two branches here, so we'll just let those go out. And then the back one here, just cutting off the tips. We've got all these back buds here that are gonna shoot out and we'll be in good shape with this one. This, this, is, this is a little bit big, but it is the more bottom part of the tree. I wish this branch was down here at this size, um, but at the moment we're okay. This one's growing from at the bottom in a weird place. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. This one looks like it's pretty much died off. I'll cut back to a bud. This one's growing up. We want, our, we want our bifurcation to be more like lateral instead of vertical. And so I could twist this branch with some wire, but I'm just gonna cut this off right here because you can't see it, but there's a bud back here by my finger here on the other side of this tip here. Maybe we'll get a branch coming out this way right here. So the next uh, part of this tree is back here. And again, this is going up. We don't want that. We want a lateral bifurcation, not a vertical. There's a bud right there that might be viable which could go out this way to make this a double. So I'm gonna cut this bottom one off as well. If not, these back here are okay. And we have some buds back in here that are starting to look like they're gonna be doing something this year. So that's super nice. So that one's fine right there. I could just trim this one back here a little bit more and cut off the tip. So this one is kind of a, one of those, what do you do with? Do I get rid of this completely? Then again, I have this open face front where there's no growth. So I'm gonna leave it, but I'm just gonna shorten it up just a little bit here. I don't know exactly. I'm gonna get rid of this uh, pruning stump. I'm gonna trim this back to a couple buds. I'm gonna make this a little shorter. I'm gonna make this a little shorter and this a little shorter. This is growing down. I'll just cut that off. So this is a, one of those debates because again, maybe I can just give it a little bit of wire one day and make it go whoop like this. 
This is where wire can really enhance a tree. But if you want to go natural clip and grow that uh, you don't want to do any wire, we'll, we'll just hope to see where this tree branch grows. Worst case is I could get this one out of our way so it's not in our face, but it's kind of growing up and out this way. And again, um, I don't want a tree to be completely bare up the front. I want to be, you know, when you look at it, I want to have some pockets. You can follow the trunk, and then, but if this is getting too thick, then I get concerned because this one is thicker than this one down here and this one down here. All of these branches up here got a little thick. We want these to be thick. So I want to make sure I maintain this a little bit better. So I think what I'll do is I'll cut it back even to here. We've got this branch right here. We'll cut this to here. We've got a bud growing right there bud back here, bud down below here. We'll just cut it there to, to, to lessen some of its vigor and hopefully it won't get super thick super fast. I'm gonna do the same thing with this guy back here. I'm gonna cut him way back to here. I'm cutting all that off because I've got all this growth right here. I'm gonna get the straight up stuff out of there and we're gonna let this branch slow down a little bit. I want these two to slow down and this one to slow down and these back ones to slow down in the midsection of the tree for this bottom to take off, right? So. This one back here, this branch is going a little bit all over the place. I'll just cut it right here to bring it back out to the, to the right. I'm going to cut this thick coarse section off in the front. And this one coming at us a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter. This is on the inside of a curve, so let's just get rid of it. And we're going to shorten this guy right here too. Again, that way this one won't get too thick as well. This one isn't as thick as these two, but it's still as thick as these guys here. We want to slow these down as much as we can. I'm actually going to go back to here because there's a nice bud right there. And let's go ahead and cut back to this bud. So now this is really small and compact and we'll see what it does. So I kind of skipped this one back here. So as you look at it, it's the next one above here. It comes back here. It's kind of it's kind of boom, 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 and then this third one, fourth one up here, boom. They're not all exactly from the same spot, which helps. This one's more straight out the back, but now I have this nice branch growing this way. But it's kind of competing with this one. It does curve up this way up here, but let's, let's try to make that do it sooner by cutting to this bud right here. This bud up here is my last bud. Maybe it'll grow up that way more. And now that shortened this big, thick branch, so again, the vigor will stay out of this middle section and hopefully stick more to these bottom sections. This back section here, I didn't cut nearly enough, enough last fall. Let's go ahead and get rid of that right there. These little branches might even not survive. We got all kinds of buds on here though. We got one way in here. We got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's so many buds on here. There's six, seven, eight more of them right there. We're actually gonna go one more shorter just to see what that does to fill out that back section. And again, our big primary branch is still out here. We could even cut this now shorter to here. So that's most of the tree, that first half of the tree. We got this weird branch coming way back over here. I'm just gonna cut that off. We got plenty of buds that are gonna pop in here. And this is again a thick branch here, maybe too thick for us. Let us get rid of some of the girth of this. We just don't want, it. We just don't want this to overtake and get thick. I might even cut it back shorter. We've got all kinds of possible buds that are coming there. I think we will have a lot. Let's just cut it shorter. Uh, we got a lot of buds that will pop in there. And then this is another one I cut real short last year. You can see my cut point right there because this is super thick. This may have to come off someday if it doesn't get thinner. So let's keep making it thinner and get rid of those. Let's get rid of this one. This one's a little thick right there. And so then we're just kind of coming up the tree here, making all this ramification thinner and thinner. So we got rid of a fair amount of branches today. We, got, we did make it a lot thinner. It's just gonna poof out and hopefully grow this summer. Hopefully all the light will get some back budding back in here and we'll get some more growth to add some more branches. Again, down the road, we may have to put a thread graft here or a, excuse me, an approach graft. Maybe get a branch growing right here or a branch growing right there. So we'll have to see what happens this year. So right here in the tip, I just cut this off up here. There's this little new leader up here. There is some movement up here. The, the straight upright, formal upright starts to get some curves up here. It's a little bit harder to keep this thing straight. Um, but we've got about a three foot tree and we've cut off some of the bulkiness of it. And I think we're ready to put it back outside and let this spring push begin here in the next couple of weeks here. We're gonna start getting more snow melt. We're gonna get temperatures in the 40s. Then we're gonna hit the 50s and life's gonna be good. So I think we're done with tree number one, the larch. We uh, really cut off way more than I thought, to be honest. 
I thought I did a decent job in the fall of cutting this back, getting it ready for the spring, but we still had too much thickness and I want to really control this center part here, so I cut some of those back more. Still leaving some girth here for this primary branch, which could become the main first branch someday. Uh, when you get an old growth forest, some of those trees on the bottom, the branches kind of break off and die off, and then you have all the growth up top. So this could be looking like a really big tall tree someday with that uh, first branch a little bit higher maybe than normal. But again, we can pull this back over here possibly as well. So we're gonna leave it alone. We're gonna put it back outside so it doesn't get too warm and cozy here in the plant room. And then we'll work on the other two trees. So next up I have the Mugo Pine. And uh, this was a find at the nursery last year. Another good find of a $20 tree that would normally be in the $60 or more range. So I paid less than a third of the price. We've got the Sherwood Compact Mugo Pine, Pinus Mugo Sherwood. Um, now again, I have learned from some MBS members and doing a little bit more research on the Mugos because I've had some difficult times with them, and here's why. I've repotted my Mugos in the spring, and if you look up Mugo Pines and when to repot them, really the summertime, it's one of the few trees that uh, like to be potted in the summertime when you're not talking tropicals. So I'm gonna do that with the Mugo. I'm gonna pot this thing later in the summer and do a little bit more research. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get this a little bit cleaned up right now so when it has its spring growth, I won't get a lot of bulging in some of the areas that already have some nasty bulges in them. I love the thickness of the trunk on this guy. You know, so we have a, a decent amount of flare at the bottom, but I don't know how far that goes down. And this has been outside, so it's gonna be frozen. So I can't tell. I was considering cutting some of this back and scraping some of this back, but we're still too frozen. I don't think, yeah, we're, we're, we're at a point of frozenness that I'm not gonna be able to see that in the bari. So all I can do is look around and kind of get a general idea of what the Nabari might be. And as I do pull back the soil, the lean to the left here seems pretty promising. So whether that's the front or this is the front, that's the lean. So really what I'm concerned about is some of the branching in here, like this guy right here has, as I mentioned earlier, five or six, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine branches around the swirl. And look, I've already taken out one, two, three, four, five. I've already taken off the bottom five. So we have a lot of things we can do with this tree um, to, to kind of prepare it for the spring. And that is that I want to make sure that we don't get any more huge swelling in this particular area. Now there's a chance with this tree that I could get rid of all of this section right here and leave these two branches right there and there. Here and there. Those could be the main branches someday. So maybe that won't be as bad of an eyesore. But I have to be able to see, yeah, see from this side the tree looks really pretty. Look at that. If we open it up this way, I still have that right. Now I have this left to right lean and it comes back here. And this is the back of the bulge. So we just don't see it as much. So that's kind of nice. So we have a couple branches in here that are just, there's no tips on them. There's no growth on them. Like right here. Look at this bottom section right there. Look at that. Did a critter get that? I'm not entirely sure, but let's go ahead and let's pop that off. And we can clean up those wounds a little bit closer when we repot, if I can't get close enough. But there, we were able to just take, that's just gonna not grow, it's just gonna die off and it might waste energy. So I'm just gonna try to find a couple of branches in here that I think are safe enough to do that with now, and then we'll get it back outside and get ready for the uh, spring growth. Like right here, this guy is not getting any light. Right here, this guy's getting no light. But it might try to push out something, now it won't. This one down here. Look at this down here. We'll cut those out of there. There, that'll help it as well. So anything I can do right now to clean up this tree a little bit will hopefully give it more uh, success in the growth and the push of spring and it won't waste some of its energy. There's a lot of old, you know, three and four year, look at these leaves in here. This is all dead and a couple of two, three-year-old leaves sections that are no longer going to be viable. We can clean out our tree. And so some of these just are pulling right out, just, just, just falling apart, right? Because this is old, old foliage, old, old needles. And then as we spread apart this tree again, here's another branch right here, right there. 
gonna cut that off right there. And there's one facing us right here towards the camera. You can't see it, but if I go like this and pull that out, there's just these little stubs in there. So the more I can clean this tree out, every bit of cleaning I can do means more sunlight into this tree, which means more uh, just uh, um, possible back budding with this tree as it grows this season. We clean this tree out. We've got a lot of cleaning on this tree that we can do. So like, look at right there, okay? No more light. This got crowded out. No more light. You can't even see the light in there, right? Because these things grow so fast. Uh, the Moogles do push out a nice flush of growth every year. At least in my experience, before I killed mine, I got this big, big uh, area of growth. And of course, I re I've discovered, I think I repotted mine at the wrong time of year, and it didn't make it. But that first push of growth just always seems so lush. And those candles, kind of candles, if you will, uh, come pumping, pump, punching out. And there's so many buds on this um, Yugo. If you look at any of these branches, three, four, three, four, five, They're, these just are so lush. I just gotta keep it alive after a transplant, huh? What do you think? That would be a good goal. All right, so looking back at that potential front here, from here, if this is gonna be a potential front, we don't want branches coming right at us, but again, if I don't know what the front is, I don't wanna be taking off branches that I don't know yet. So this is just a pre-spring cleaning right now, getting rid of some of these that are just for sure not gonna make it. We're gonna clean this out a little bit so some sun can get in here and, uh, and do some magic. And when I'm cleaning this out, if I find some areas that three or four branches are growing from the same spot and I don't want bulges, well, I of course can cut out some of those as well. My challenge right now is I don't know which ones to cut because I don't know what the front of the tree is. So this is kind of a cleaning mission right now. Some, some wonderful movement in here. There's some wonderful branching. And I don't know if I'll be able to show you this or not, but but look at, look at how many branches are in there. There's some osmocote sitting right up there, fertilizing the uh, crevice of the tree branches. There, is, there are so many branches, I just don't know what's gonna be the front yet or not. Now, I will say, there's so many coming from this tip up here, we're gonna have to get rid of something, I think, or it's just gonna get so super bulgy. This was a T branch where the other one's growing up, so I'm, I cut the one that was growing more down just to give it some more air in here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how bold I should be right now because we want to wait till that. There is a nice secondary branch in here. You see, there's two branches right here. This one has a nice branch here that if I cut off this middle section because it's not doing well, it leaves these two outer ones. So do I keep this branch right here? Or do I keep this one right here? This one has the stronger shoots. It's the stronger branch. There's actually three shoots on there. I could cut it down to two. I could cut down the bottom one so we have lateral bifurcation. And that is a stronger branch by far, but it might be in the middle in our eyes when we have this as a possible front. But for right now, I'll keep it like that. I got rid of this branch way down deep. And then I got rid of this branch right here because there were three growing from this same spot. Now that's a cut I can make because this is laterally growing. Here's a lateral branch, right? They're this way instead of this way. And so I cut that bottom one off. That was a safe cut. This right here has a weak piece and I can just pull it off with my finger. Now this one is not lateral, this is horizontal. So this whole branch might come off eventually for this over here, which is lateral right here, which has three branches growing from it. One, two, three, here's the thick one. We could pull it back by cutting the thick coarse center off and have the two wide ones. Or if I don't want this to be in my way, if this is the front, I could cut off the right one and have these grow over more this way. But I don't know if that's the front, so I'm not gonna make that decision today. So this whole branch is super cool. It's kind of leaning on the, on the, uh, on the um, pot right now. And there's all kinds of branching going on there. I don't know what we're gonna keep. Or That's a beautiful branch and it swings upward in the back there. You see that branch right there? Beautiful, beautiful um, ramification there. So this is coming right at us. So that would be one that would come off. And even if this was the back of the tree, I think I can safely remove that. That big one and open that space up just a little bit more. So again, if this is the possible front of a tree down the road or some angle, something like this, 
that was just so in our face. And we've got all this beautiful branching back here. This is a really nice section back here. And we actually have one growing up right here that I could just I could take off because it's weak on the inside and not getting much sun. You can see some dye back there. Some nice little movement on some of these branches, which is super fun to see. They go ziggy zaggy. Here's a spot where right now there's there's three or four coming right out of this same spot. I'm gonna grow the one going up. It just thins that out a little bit because we still have one, two, three, four right from that same area. I'm gonna cut that center one out, make it less bulky. And now we'll choose which branch we take after we figure out a front and all that. So I think part of me does want to get rid of something out here. This one's growing weird inside. I'm gonna take that one out. Had a weird angle to it, it's growing back into the tree. So when you've got branches that are that, that directly going back into the tree, we most often want to get rid of those. Not always, but most often. Again, there's that big bulge right there. Got all these branches. Thick one here, thick one here and here. There's one in there. There's four real thick ones and then three medium ones. What can I do? The thing about not knowing where the front is, is it could lean this way, it could be leaning this way. Look at all that undergrowth there. Look at all the movement. This tree just shows fabulous movement already, but we don't know what we're gonna keep with these uh, bulgy areas here. So here's a section right here. We have one, two, three, and then one, two, three. So. I can certainly trim out something there. Did I lose my branch right here? You know, here's an interior that's just died off. So we have one, two, three here. This is the vigor right here in the middle. These are the side branches, but this has a nice double there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off right there because this has a nice vertical boom, boom right here. So nice two right there as it splits into two. And we can see if we can split that somewhere down the road. Um, this one has a little bit of uh, dieback rough part right here, so maybe I cut that one off. So now we have our two, and then it goes to two there. This one could be put down here a little bit. Again, just a little, little, little thing there because we saw three branches and we can go down to two. So again, to reiterate, I don't want to take away branches unless I'm really, really confident that it's not going to be used in the design, or we have a really, you know, uh, you know, three or four. Uh, branches growing from that spot that's making it super, super um, potentially bulky. And then again, until I know the front, I can't make some of those final permanent decisions on some of these because the whole design could change if I change the front from one side to another, which is obvious, but, but we want to be careful. My only concern still is this is so thick and bulky and it's a very, very you know, this apical, apical dominance right here is just gonna, look at this, these are gonna just wanna go and grow. And they're from these thick ones. And which one do I keep? Do I keep them all? We have one, two, three, right in a row there. We're only gonna keep two of them. For sure not three. And I'm wondering if this side one could come off. And I think it can. I like the split here. Let's cut that branch off right there. That right there will cut down some of that potential girth from getting out of control. And then if this is still the front, we just took, cut, out, cut out this one, but I've got this one right here that can fill that space. I got this right here that can fill that space. Those are actually competing. Take that one off right there so this one can fill could fill right over here possibly. So now we've cut it down to one, two, three, four, five. Five branches up in this area. That's better than eight. This is that one that could fill down here, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Two, at least two more of these will go, but we're not gonna do that decision now. We've cut a fair amount out. We've gotten rid of a lot of the dead pine needles in here. And this is starting to look like uh, it's gonna get some nice light from, from, from uh, the springtime now here. We'll get some push of growth on all these buds and let this thing grow like crazy. And then we will repot in the summertime and uh, make, start to make some initial decisions on how this tree will look in a pot. All right, the Mugo pine is done. 
I'm back from lunch with my dad. So I had some great Mongolian barbecue buffet food and I'm ready to dig back into a tree here. So we have our second pine today. We did the Mugo just moments ago. But this one, I can't find the tag for, but it's a version of a Scots pine. And I'm gonna come out to the front here and again, we're gonna actually uh, repot this one in the spring, unlike the Mugo. And uh, I get a little bit of a cutting last year when we got it from the nursery. And uh, I just wanna make sure I do a little cleanup. So we're gonna make sure that we get some of the old dead needles off, the uh, third year needles, uh, anything anything uh, that's just uh, kind of been dying and, and, and weakening out. Uh, we got this branch right here that's just really weak and not doing a whole lot. Uh, we got some weak ones in here. Um, we don't wanna make the uh, tree work too hard in the spring with all this uh, stuff that's on the verge of dying or is dead. We'll clean it up here, let that sunlight come through, and uh, we'll see what's gonna happen with this pine. So it was a really nice thick pine, and I did take off some of these uh, uh, branches early. I don't remember what they actually were, how, how big they were, but there is a bulge here too, like the Mugo. So we've got a kind of a slanting trunk here. And again, this is frozen, so I can't quite see where the Nabari is going to be, um, how far down. But it does have a nice slant to the left. And if you look at it from this side, that bulge isn't so big. Just clean that off a little bit nicer. And again, we got this broken branch right here that could be a gin. I left it there for now. I'll continue to leave it there and see what happens as we go into the spring here. We have a branch in here that's dead between these, you know, right there. So we got a little bit of die back on this tree right here. It's kind of a weak branch right here coming from in here. But this side is a little bit more healthy. The bottom section is a little bit more healthy. So where there are three we can go down to two and keep the healthier healthier ones this one there's no growth on it this one has some dieback cutting into green cambium layer though so there's uh, there's life into this tree here um, these middle two look like they're not in good shape so we'll cut that one off for right now this one right here we got uh, one, two, three, four branches, and it looks like most of them are not, not gonna stay with us. So look at this, we got a whirl in here. Look at that whirl in there. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12, 13, 14 branches in there. White pines, our native white pines do a lot of that growth where they've got like five, six, seven whirls, our branches to the whirl. So we don't want all that growth in there. So that's one spot where I can just take out a few branches and let it shoot up this year and see which ones do really well. And then I can pick the uh, final couple branches based on how I repot this thing. And if this is a potential front, this is coming right at us. I'm just gonna get rid of this one because it was really thick with this little growth down here. Got some old stumps in here that I was taking off that I never completely cleaned off. This trunk is frozen into the pot, so we're not quite waking up yet. We shouldn't get too much slap sap flow at the moment. So it does have a, a trunk that's gonna need some work here. We got this big bulge right here and we got some potential bulging up here. Um, but we are, uh, we're just doing a little bit of late winter cleanup here. So a couple more spots here where we have uh, all of this uh, growth of four, four or more. We don't need four or more. We want to eventually get it down to two. We're going to see which ones come back strong this year and make our decisions based on where the front is. So I think we'll leave some of the rest of this alone. 
Definitely a very flexible tree. We could do a lot with wire in here and make this grow any way we want to with whatever branches we, uh, whatever we keep here. So I think that's gonna be it for today. We uh, got some cleanup here. Some of the old needles, there goes the heater back on. See, the energy's been fighting for what it's gonna do. Pull off some of these older leaves in here. Uh, foliage, rather, the needles, the older needles. And we're gonna put this back out on, side the, on the outside bench. And we'll just let this thing flush out this spring as we repot and then see how, uh, see, see what, uh, what branches do well in the first year here. And I'll see if I can find my records to give us a uh, name for this guy. Because I can't quite remember which pine it is. But I believe it was a version of a Scots pine, but it's not a, a dwarf for sure. Um, the trunk looks very mugle-like, the way it's bulking up like it is. All right, I think that's all we're gonna do to it today. I just wanted to give it a quick, uh, quick look at, get rid of some of the really obvious uh, spots where there are four, five, and six uh, branches that we could get rid of a couple of them, like right in here. We don't need that. There was five of them in there, we're, or six of them in there, we're down to four. Again, we're gonna see what happens this spring, which pops back to life before we make some cuts, and we're gonna figure out where the front of this tree is gonna be in a pot before we make any more decisions. So let's just take our hands off it here. Yeah. So there we go. We'll see what this thing has to offer in the springtime. So let's get this thing back out on the bench with the other ones. So it's not raining very much today. It's very gray and misty and foggy, but there's already enough moisture on the roof to provide about a half a bucket of water. I just can't forget about this bucket of water as I go about my business today. So I'm gonna go show you those trees as we finish them up and then uh, I gotta head to my niece's birthday party. So this has been awesome. Let's go check out those trees and I just can't forget about that later. We're not quite at 40 degrees yet. It uh, was supposed to be in the mid 40s. I think the temperature has changed several times. Missed all my trees. So we have the larch all set and ready to go. A little bit thinner, a little bit trimmer. And we're gonna let this thing explode with growth here coming up. We got the uh, mugo pine. We did a little bit of cleanup on that. Got rid of a lot of the uh, dead pine needles. A couple of branches we cleaned up there. So this will be fun to uh, see how it pushes out in the spring. But remember, we're not gonna repot this until summertime. And then the last one we did here was the, uh, the version of a Scots pine. I believe it's a Scots pine. It almost, I uh, I just, I won't guess. I gotta, I've been looking for my tags and I can't find them all afternoon here so far, so I gotta do some digging. Um, but we'll get this into a pot this spring, but we also cleaned out some of the dead branches on this and just gave it a little bit more uh, room for light to come on through and give it a big spring, spring push because there are lots of buds in here on the tips and uh, this should be fun to see how this uh, comes to fruition. So there we have it, a little bit of work. It is March Madness, although it's a slow start to March Madness. Um, not the basketball kind, of course, the bonsai kind. And I'm not even sure exactly how many repots I have uh, the coming up this year. So part of my March Madness will be to be looking through the cold frames, looking at the garden and seeing what I'm hoping to accomplish with some early spring repots. So one of those keys in the spring is to make sure that you're uh, not uh, gonna repot too late. So we might have to get an early jump on some of the repots so we can finish it all before all of these plants push out too much growth and then it's more detrimental to repot than to not repot. So we have some scoping out to do and we'll figure that out. Hey, a big shout out to Nigel Saunders. Um, uh, congratulations on getting back so quickly and nice to see the ficus Friday. Uh, I was on the treadmill as I mentioned earlier, I think that uh, got back into the swing of things by doing my morning walk. It was a run this morning actually as I was watching Nigel work on Franken, the Franken ficus. So that was super cool. So uh, neat to see the community come out to support Nigel and uh, can't wait to the next video, Nigel. In the meantime, I got some more uh, putzing to do in the house. We got a birthday party to go to and we got to end this somewhere, right? So, all right, take care of you. Take care of your bonsai and we'll catch you very, very soon on another episode of Dave's Bonsai. All right, take care, everybody.